Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right into it. So as you may have surmised, and I'm pretty sure you've been looking at your portfolio, it's a nice day for Bitcoin, not for, not for everything. And that's pretty much just par for the course. And what you'll notice is that the market cap itself is 2.4 trillion, but it looks like we're down over a 24-hour time period of 0.6%. Why is that? Well, let's just take a quick look at in the last 24 hours what's up bigly and what's not. Bitcoin, almost 2%. Over 30 days, 5.3. Solana, actually down for one of the first times I can remember. It's Solana was on quite a tear. And now it's uh, over 24 hours. Not so good, but seven days, almost 12%. Pretty good. Dogecoin, 7.4% <laughs> in 24 hours and 17% in seven days. And you ask yourself, well, why is that? Why is that going on? Look no further than Elon Musk because... This is what Elon does. He is the ultimate troll. I mean, he does own X, so he can do whatever he wants to. But this was his post as of 16 hours ago. So tell me what you think is going to happen with, with, with Dogecoin. And that's just how it goes, par for the course. So if you want to make some money, just watch Elon. And uh, when he posts anything about Dogecoin, just buy Dogecoin. Not financial advice, just gambling advice. And then, of course, we go down the list. And yeah, I mean, you'll see like things like wrap Bitcoin is up. What else is up? USDS and stables, I guess, you know, here on Witbit or White Bitcoin. Uh, Thorchain, it's up 14%. Congratulations, Thorchain users. And then also you'll see stuff like this, like Popcat is up 62% in seven days. If you don't know, that's a bit, that's a meme coin that's uh, been playing out. And what else is there? There's one more. Radium, ID 5% in uh, seven days. SPX 6900, also a meme coin, up 706%. So when we talk about these things about, you know, like meme coins kind of popping off, just don't look no further than that. But then if you think about it, you're like, well, why is why are we here? We're down for the market cap, but yeah, Bitcoin's doing so well. It's because of uh, Ben's favorite topic, Bitcoin dominance. And I believe he's still doing a live stream right now. Uh, waiting for it to hit 60%. If we look at, to include stable coins, I want to say 58.89. Depends on where you're looking at. I think Ben looks at other places. I think you should look at his website or whatever. You're almost at 59%. So it looks like it's uh, it's going to hit at some point. So we'll see how it goes. But the thing is, is well, how is how are we looking for right now? I got to tell you, this is looking pretty good. And uh, I was a little bit um, concerned about October, because it didn't seem like October was going to really get anywhere. But hey, as of today, we're up 7%. And I want to show you something, because I don't know what is going to happen in November and or December. I have no idea. But if you look at the last, actually, if you look at all, all of the having years, let's take a look at 2020. How did November, December look? Pretty damn good. 42% and 48% in 2020. What about 2016? Also fantastic. 6.2% in November and December, it crushed it at 30%. What about 2012? The very first halving. Well, actually October wasn't that great, but November and December were pretty damn good. 13.5% and 7%. So when I see this and I'm like, okay, well, I didn't think October was going to rally this hard and it did. And we're going to take a look at why, but November, December, I think we're going to do pretty well. And it just goes to show you that, and this is what I've been preaching for, I don't know how long, but nothing's going to really happen until after this, uh, after this election. I mean, Bitcoin's doing just fine. And I think the smart people understand it. And the big institutions and the big players behind the scenes are like, okay, let's just buy a little OTC and do some stuff. But at some point, things get out and people start buying a little bit too much and then it goes up. But uh, things won't happen until after the election. That's usually what happened. Like we took a lot, took a look back at 2012. What happened? November, December were awesome. 2016, what happened? November, December were awesome. 2020, same thing. I just don't see us not having a very fantastic couple of months coming up. But what could derail that? Well, I mean, we could have a lot of things. Geopolitical issues could come out. World War III could come out. I hate to break it to you, but if we're in a nuclear war, we're not going to hit all-time highs. And I think that's the least you're going to have to worry about. But and we'll see what happens with the with the rate cuts. If the Fed pivots again and says, you know what, 
it's just going too fast. You know, CPI, PPI numbers are coming out it's a little bit too, too wacky. We're going to just hold off. Then things get a little bit shaky and dicey. And quantitative easing, if we're not, you know, printing that liquidity, who knows? I still think there's plenty of liquidity in the world. Just look at gold, $12 trillion of uh, uh, AUM. And then also if we take a look at just real estate, 600, no, excuse me, $258 trillion. There's plenty of liquidity out there. just hasn't really found Bitcoin. But what happened? Well, funny thing is that as we were all kind of like saying, yeah, is October going to be good? This is what people were doing. This is what institutions were doing. This is what big buyers are doing. October's crypto investment inflows climbed to $3.4 billion after $900 million were added last week. So maybe we have nothing to worry about. Maybe we just give in to the, we just give in the resignation that, hey, October is going to be good. And it is. And November, December is going to be good. And 2025 is going to stick to the four-year cycle. I don't know. It's crazy, but it's kind of working out that way. We'll see if it does. Here's what we got. Global crypto funds run by asset managers. That's BlackRock, Bitwise, Fidelity, Grayscale, ProShares, 21 shares. Registered net inflows of $901 million last week. Almost $3.5 billion has now flowed into digital asset investment products in October alone, representing 12% of assets under management, and the fourth largest month on record. There's all these sweet inflows. Very nice. I like this. Bitcoin-based funds almost entirely dominated. I'm going to read that again. Bitcoin-based funds almost entirely dominated. That's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of looking at Bitcoin dominance and saying, yeah, this is what it is. But at some point, you have to understand that the dominance, and Ben would even agree with me on this one, dominance will switch. Dominance will get out from Bitcoin. People will gamble. People will take those funds that they have rolled into Bitcoin and they made a lot of money. And some, not all, they're gonna roll those into alts. And those are gonna be those are gonna be large cap alts. And then they're gonna go into small cap alts and they're gonna roll right back into Bitcoin. I'm not saying that's how it's going to happen, but that's how it's played out every single cycle so far. So we'll see if it actually uh, retains that. But that's just how I see things. I could be wrong. Anyhow. Bitcoin-based funds dominated, 920 million worth. Short, and this is interesting. Short Bitcoin positions also saw a minor net outflow of 1.3 million. Wow, finally the bears might be giving up. Blockchain equities and Solana products, Solana, pro, Solana products, also registered weekly inflows of 12 million and 10 million, which isn't that much, I get you, right? If you don't like Solana, you're like, that's lame, Rob. I don't care about that, but it's something. We're going to take a look at uh, inflows and outflows. In comparison, Ethereum-based funds returned to net weekly outflows of 34 million as the ETH ratio fell to its lowest level since April 2021. This is why I just look at Ethereum, and I know it's supposed to be the future of finance. Everybody loves it. I mean, not everybody. It seems like it's kind of it's kind of losing favor. And I just wonder if if this is like Ethereum's MySpace moment where it was really big in the beginning and people really wanted to build on it. It's gonna be awesome. Layer twos come in, layer threes, and then people are like, you know what? There's other layer ones just way easier. We'll just use those. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll take a look at inflows and outflows. It just makes me wonder if Ethereum is that bellwether of what's going on. Because if we take a look at ETFs, I mean, check this out. Total net flows as of October 25th, this was Friday, you had 6,000 Bitcoin put in. 6,000 Bitcoin, where'd it come from? BlackRock, mostly. Fidelity and ARK, even though ARK sold off, which is weird, ARK sold off a little bit uh, last time, or last week, so whatever. And right now, again, we are at all-time highs for net flows to ETFs. And what about Ethereum? Ethereum's been sucking, and this, it's just, there's not, it's just not there. How many zeros do you see there? A lot of zeros. That means that nobody is buying into Ethereum to the ETF. They're just like, we're not interested. And that's the thing. If there would have been staking, if it would have been allowed by the SEC, there would have been a huge amount of interest, I think. But Gary Gensler and all his wisdom said, well, no, we're not going to allow that to happen. They go, okay, fine. We'll just have this out and see how it does. And it sucked. It's been bad. It hasn't really worked out. I still hold Ethereum, but if you're looking at institutions, they're like, we're not picking this as far as ETFs. And of course, you can you can debate if it's gonna be like the retail part of the institutions, but look, as of 25 October, the only, the only action it had was, uh, what is this? 
19 million outflow from our buddies over at uh, Grayscale. And the day before that, you had 2.3 million from BlackRock. Actually, if it wasn't for BlackRock, this would have been dead already, quite honestly. They're the only ones keeping this somewhat afloat. But right now, the total flows, as you can see, uh, almost 500 million. So that's a big dud. So the question comes, and this is what it was like last cycle. They're like, well, should you just put, should you buy Bitcoin? Because Ethereum can out, outshine, it can outproduce. Uh, and should you get in some other smaller caps? There was a nice article from fool.com, Motley Fool, which some people still read, I guess. But it made a good point. Should you forget Bitcoin and buy Solana instead? And, and just, I'm not going to read the whole article because it's boring. But here's the three points. Bitcoin's recent having an ETF approval signal potential growth for the largest crypto. Not only that, if they would have gone deeper, they would have shown you like, hey, look, the ETF is, I think, the second biggest ETF of this year and the fourth largest ever or something like that. It's just massive. Solana offers high performance and low fees. That's true. Uh, I'm not going to get into the, into the whole thing about the bots and, of course, the inflation. Not only that's just another video. Aiming to build a large community of app developers. And it states here, diversifying your portfolio with Bitcoin and Solana can reap the benefits of both while mitigating risk. And I thought about that as I was taking a look at this on-chain analysis. I love on-chain analysis. You know why? Because you can make it whatever you want it to be. All you got to do is just cherry pick some data. And I'm going to have you do your own research. There's a website that this was taken from. It's Artemis. But I wanted to show you this. It says Solana, and it talks about Solana leads all blockchains with the highest daily net inflows. And it's true. In one day, Solana overtook <clears throat> Arbitrum, BNB, Clayton, SWE, Phantom, and everything else. What the hell's Ethereum? Oh, yeah, Ethereum's down here. Look at that. Its outflows is like uh, 30 million. Okay, well, where'd they get this information from? Artemis Terminal. I linked this in the description because I want you to do this. See, it has top 15 inflows, top 15 outflows, and top 15 net flows. The period is one day. Absolutely, it's true. Solana, awful. Awfully big, I should say. That's the net flows. So let's back up. Actually, come over here. Come over here with me. Top 15 inflows. Let's back this up. Let's go one month. Ah, different, different picture, right? Here's the inflows. Ethereum's crushing everything. And Arbitrum and Base are right there. And of course, there's a layer two, and then Solana's right there. How about if we go back even farther, three months? Okay, for a three-month time frame, you have to understand the inflows are pretty good, really good for Ethereum Arbitrum. Solana, still pretty good. But then you have to, that's just the inflows. What about the out? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's go for a month. Ethereum had a boatload of outflows in a month, about three months. Still a boatload, boatload. And let's just do, excuse me, over here, three months. Ethereum has a lot. Arbitrum has a lot, base. Those are outflows. Now we just go look at the net. Let's just make this simple. Stop messing around. But this is why I like, like I said, this is why I like on-chain analysis, because if I want to prove a point, I'll just cherry pick the data. But that's not what you want to do. You want to take a look at it for yourself because I'm just a guy talking to a computer uh, in a very nice looking green screen. Over three months, we can see that, yeah, uh, Solana is crushing it. However, look at this. Base, layer two solution for NetFlows is also killing it. Look at that. Inflows, outflows, NetFlows, 469. NetFlow is double in Solana. SWE, now this is something. If you're looking for the next Solana killer, which I don't think this is actually is, or actually will do pretty well, maybe look at SWE. SWE has a net flow of 349 million. Avalanche, one of my, one of my favorites, especially for gaming, 69 million. BNB chain, not so much. Moonbeam, blah, 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 blah. And Ethereum is actually outflows. So again, take things with a grain of salt and also take a look at, if you're looking for investments and where to go, there's a great website, CoinGo Live. And you can see this, the percent price drop since all-time high. And besides a couple things, Bitcoin is only 6% off its all-time highs. Solana, as good as it is, it's still 32% off its all-time high. Uh, XRP, watch out, 84%. Doge is 80% off of its all-time highs. 
Holy smokes. Well, let's see if, if uh, Elon can pump up those numbers. AVAX is 82% down. SHIB is 80%. I mean, just look at this. Here's a stable coin. Most of these things, except for this, I got to take a look at this. I don't know what the heck this is. White Bitcoin, it's $18. It must have, it's only zero. It's almost at its all-time high, essentially. And there was one more. Popcat, 11% <laughs> up. There was one called Fast Token. Solve Bitcoin. The wrapped, I guess. And this one, I got to do a look in this. Fast Token, it's over a year old. And it's only down one almost two percent it's weird anyhow that's what we have for today's information so thanks so much for stopping by i appreciate you if you like today's video go to thumbs up consider subscribing now if you want to stick around we'll do a little q a some good questions I saw one from danny who was looking pretty good uzi and uh, i'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities and uh, we'll get out of here but if you gotta take off take off thanks so much